uh, but firstly thanks to social beat i think it's been an amazing partnership with them uh, they have a large sales force practice so obviously we work very closely in a lot of digital transformation journeys uh, for some of our leading clients so let me just start with some humor just to kind of energize this room so when we think about future what we really looking at is having all the data in our fingertips right uh, but then the reality sets in with an average of 90 systems uh, in in any organization it's very very difficult to actually get all that data and really put it on your fingertips um but even if you manage to do that what really happens so you get this beautiful dashboard which has all the data and i'm just trying to think inside the team's mind who's probably built this with a lot of effort uh what kind of struggles they would have gone through right the first thing is there is just so much data that they need to kind of crunch into these beautiful colorful dashboards the second thing is i don't think they really understand the user who's asked for this data or the stakeholder whether it's a business head a marketing head a finance head and uh, the third thing probably is they really don't know where to get this data from because they probably don't have the right skill sets to put it all together so what happens what do you do in this kind of a situation you'd probably just think let me just give all the data to that person uh, he will get all that he needs and it will answer all of his questions and imagine you being at the receiving end where you get all of this data you'll probably have a similar expression like john travolta like what do i do with this uh, what is the action that i need to take what's the insight and probably a lot more uh, things that i cannot explicitly say here so it all comes across as noise it all comes across as very confusing and uh, pointless at times so when you think about noise there's a very interesting paradox all noise is data and all data is noise underneath this huge set of data there is obviously a lot of valuable information that our customers and their customers are leaving for us to really tune out all the noise and look at what they're trying to tell us and that is where salesforce comes into picture so we have recently launched a data cloud uh, which is basically a customer data platform which is primarily built for processing large volumes of data and really translating them for our customers to use them efficiently in real time so what does that really mean it means that we're going to for some reason my clicker is not working okay it means what we are really trying to do is bring in data from all those 90 applications or more whether within salesforce outside of salesforce really connecting them harmonizing them and really building that single view of customer that every business yearns for so that they can leverage it and empower all their downstream activities whether it's intelligence whether it's insights whether on the marketing side driving the right campaigns personalization all of those things and that's what uh, the salesforce data cloud can empower you to do So how does data cloud work? I don't want this to be a technical discussion, but I do want you to kind of fundamentally understand what are we really going here for. So like I said, we have the capability of connecting all of your data from different sources in different velocities, bring it all together, harmonize it and put it in an intelligent structured manner for you to make sense of and help you build that single source of truth. So when I say single source of truth, it not just means deduplicating data bringing the phone numbers the pii information but also a lot more other attributes that a customer could be leaving either on your digital channels or on your offline channels and really building that customer graph that you can eventually use to analyze and predict and empower all your downstream systems so what does this data cloud really eventually give you as a brand but before that these data clouds can also be extended to a data ecosystem where you can bring your own lake 
you can bring your own AI model to activate customized, personalized experiences. You can activate, uh, you know, your ads, first party advertising on Google and Meta. And then obviously leverage a lot of our app exchange partners to deliver those amazing experiences that a lot of uh, the panels were talking about. So what does it mean for your customers? So Megha potentially is a customer. What does she get if you have the data cloud in place? She served a very targeted, relevant ad whenever there's a new launch. She is greeted with a personalized experience. She's able to spend a lot of time on the website, but when she's just about to drop off, she gets the contextual support that she requires, which ultimately helps her getting an amazing experience and helps us build her as a brand advocate. And how do you do this? You will have options as a marketer to tap into that data to that single source of truth to really identify what Megha likes, which channel is she most active on and what is she really looking for and have all the context that Megha would have done with your brand through various channels. You will be able to real time contextualize her experience so that she comes out with a smiling face and is able to recall uh, the brand and the experience that she had. Eventually, she's more brand aware, she's interested, she's acting loyal and she's feeling loyal. And as a business, at the end with the data cloud, what you'll end up getting is knowing a lot more about Megha and people like Megha. You'll have richer profiles that you'll be able to tap into and target and obviously nurture her in the most contextual manner, which should lead to increased uh, lifetime value. Thank you. And so Data Cloud is the future of Salesforce. And we are really hoping that this is going to help us build amazing customer experiences that a lot of our clients are hoping for. So any questions? Uh, it was a very short 10 minute thing that I had planned. I cut down a little bit of content, but any questions, please let me know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So in situations where uh, you do not have a lot of data, that means that you will need to embark on a journey where you start collecting data, right? So you can do it as basic as, uh, you know, running campaigns with your existing set of customers and, you know, collecting more data, information that you probably may not be capturing today. You can leverage any of your digital assets if there are, like for example, your websites or app and try and understand what is it, you know, a certain set of cohorts who are potentially your customers looking for so that you leverage that information. And then using that information, you can then target lookalike audiences and, you know, kind of drive traffic to your website and kind of build on that. But all of this at the end should flow back into something like a data cloud, which is, you know, an ever increasing profiling that is happening, which you will eventually use to again, be more focused on who you want to reach out to. Okay, sure. <laughs> okay, thank you. So what I've seen uh, with uh, most of the businesses, okay, larger businesses go for Salesforce. Yeah. But when it comes to smaller businesses, how Is it for smaller businesses? Is it for that small business that is happening in a single apartment where they're just selling stuff online uh, through Instagram? Is so, it for that business? So you'll be surprised to know that we are associated with a lot of startups also. So I don't think the size of the business really decides whether Salesforce is a good investment. I think uh, the way to look at it is what is their vision and are they looking at uh, you know, some of the key capabilities that a product like Salesforce can only bring in. So I don't think that it's more about uh, how big or small the business is. It's more about how large your vision is, where you would want to kind of invest in a product like Salesforce. I know a lot of people think that it might be a very expensive product or it's a very large investment, but then there are different kinds of products and, uh, you know, additions, if I may say, which could meet 
uh, you know your specific maybe short term objectives uh, so yeah uh just adding to that mm-hmm. uh the reason why i talked about the you know the small sized businesses yeah uh is because they may not have the exact uh they may not even know the exact marketing terminology they may not know you know what all salesforce is uh you know providing to them yes so how how do you help them out with that particular purpose they are not marketers they just know what their business is so Correct. how do you help with that so we have a very uh, i don't know how many of you know we have a trailhead community which is like an open learning platform for people who want to know more about salesforce its capabilities and it's not just restricted to salesforce capabilities but also a lot of trends in the industry like chat gpt web3 all of that so that's one source for people to really understand what's out there and kind of get up, you know themselves uh, more updated on what's happening in the market and what are the strategies the other thing is like i said we have a suite of products we are no longer just a crm solution company we have solutions around marketing we have our own e-commerce solution loyalty solution so depending on the specific objective of the business we typically first do like an awareness and education session or a point of view on how we think salesforce's specific product can address some of the specific objectives that a business has and then we kind of decide on whether uh those objectives along with the larger future roadmap that they have aligns with you know their investment in technology and specifically in salesforce so yes